Welcome to The Gen Z Journey, where we work with you through an entrepreneurial lens to build a wholesome perspective on life and build both our business and personal dreams together. Join our community on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn at Gen Z Journey. back to another Gen Z Journey podcast. You're joined today um, with a special guest for this podcast, which is awesome. I'm really excited to introduce him in one moment. But like I always say at the start of these podcasts, we really uh, we really do them just so you get to know the guest intimately, you know who they are, where, they're on, where they are on their journey and, and where they're going, which in most cases, like with our guest today, is, is somewhere very big and, and very exciting. So yeah, we're super, super excited to introduce Emilio. Um, and uh, he's, a, he's a professional cricketer uh, back in the UK, back in my, my home country. So that's very exciting. He's signed a professional contract with Northamptonshire and, uh, and he's been playing uh, there now, I think a year if, I, if I'm right. But I'll get him to just do a small introduction um, before we dive more into the main body of this podcast. So Emilio, please take it away. Give a little introduction of yourself. Um, yeah, Emilio Gay here. Um, like you said, a contracted player with Northamptonshire. Um, I've been on their staff for a year now, roughly, just over a year. Um, so it's good to be here, guys. Um, just with, obviously, the virus and stuff, the season's just kicking off now, which is a bit late, but at least we're getting back to playing some cricket. Um, but yeah, so it's looking good. It's looking good right now. Thanks for that introduction. Uh, we're... we're... Obviously, really excited to have you here on the podcast and, and just to find out more about your story. Um, for me, yeah, cool. and I'll, I'll ask Aaron about this as well, but for me, I, I just really excited to interview you because of your mindset and the way you think. You know, you're really, really passionate about um, cricket and, and what is your both your your work and your play, and you're really passionate about that. And for me, that that's kind of the essence of the people that I really enjoy and and develop good friendships with. So it's exciting for me to have a conversation with you um, because I I just really connect with you on that level. But Aaron, why are you excited to interview Emilio? Yeah, I mean, for me, the first thing when I met you was was your humility and your the way you kind of spoke about yourself you know you you bragged a bit but you weren't like uh, uh, you weren't like yeah like I'm the best you know or I'm really good at this or like look at me I want attention kind of thing you're very humble in the way you approached it and it was more of like yeah like I, I did this but it was through you know sweat blood and tears you know and uh, that that's what really got me and that's why I'm excited to be interviewing you yeah I appreciate it cheers appreciate it it's good to be here can he he can uh, say what he wants, but then he'll back it up with the, with the skill and the effort. So that's <laughs> I love that. I love that. Awesome. So let's let's dive straight into it. Um, I want to find out more about your background first. I want to get the audience to to get to know you, where you came from, um, and and how you got to where you are. So let's just start with the basics of of kind of how did you get into cricket initially, and and why were you so passionate about it as, as such a young individual. Um, I got into cricket really from a young age, like really young, like five or so. Um, had my dad throwing balls at me in the garden um, at the flat at the time. Um, and it was kind of split between football and cricket. Um, always been sporty, loved both of them. Um, and I just juggled between the two, really. Um, and then went to the Caribbean in 2007 for the World Cup. Um, and over there, they're crazy about cricket, or especially back then they were anyway. And kind of fell in love with the game. And literally since about seven, I've looked to be a professional cricketer. That was the dream of mine. Um, and kind of worked towards towards it literally since then. So um, I can sit, sit here as a pro cricketer now and look back and say that, you know, it's been a good journey so far. But obviously, you know, there's a lot, a lot of work to be done. And kind of the career is just starting if you look at it from a professional standpoint anyway. Absolutely. And and just to clarify, you went to go and watch the the World Cup in the Caribbean, not play. You weren't that good, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I was yeah, I wasn't that good. I mean, I went to watch. Um yeah, I went to watch. Yeah, I would have loved to have played, but I don't know if I'd have been ready yet. Um but yeah, so I a key thing for me, because I the West Indian players were obviously there at the time and I stayed in the hotel next door to them and I got to meet the players. Um which were heroes of mine. And they gave, one of them gave me a shirt and a ticket for the game. So, you know, as a seven-year-old and you've got like a, an international player giving you a free shirt and a ticket, you can imagine like for, for that seven-year-old, that's kind of like a dream come true already. So that was kind of where I just thought, wow, like this is what I want to do. Um, you know, so it was kind of quite straightforward from there. 
Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And so then the question I wanted to ask you is, as you were going through kind of um, your secondary school, as you're going through your high school, was there any ever doubt, like you said, since seven, you know, that's you had your mindset on it. That's what you wanted to do. So was there ever a, was there ever a point where you were, where there was any doubt or that you thought maybe this is not the, the, the way to go or was you just always been set on it? Um, yeah, no, I've always been, I've always been set on it. Um, it's been, I, I'd never said, I've never had doubt in terms of turning pro. That's been crystal clear for me. I've always backed myself. Um, but there's definitely been, not doubters, but people who have tried to kind of convince me to maybe take a different path or have a backup plan or whatever. I mean, at school, especially teachers would say, oh, look, um, this percent of people make it. If you thought, you know, go to uni, do something like to just give yourself that support. Um, and I know other cricketers who were trying to make it kind of had a similar mindset and they thought, well, what are the chances of me making it quite slim? So let's maybe explore other areas just to have some protection. But for me, I just saw that as an advantage because I'm thinking everyone here is thinking, right, there's cricket, but I could maybe do that. But I'm thinking that's kind of like, well, I back myself 100%. Why should I invest in another avenue? Um, and if I give 100% to be a cricketer and I don't make it, so be it. I'd rather do that than give 70% and look back and go, actually, I should have given 100%. So there was never really any doubt there. I don't know if you spoke to other players, they might be different. But for me, there was no doubt. Um, you know, there's, it kind of drilled into you that it's a, like I said before, there's a small percentage of people that make it. But for me, if you tick all the boxes and you, you know, you're disciplined and you work hard and you believe in yourself, that percentage gets bigger, if that makes sense. Um, so for me, that's how I looked at it anyway, just ticking all the boxes and backing yourself. I, 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 I really love the fact that you actually uh, say that one part of I did 100%, you know, I, you didn't give it that 70% because if you were to split that, that effort into pursuing another passion or pursuing that backup and not putting your 100%, you maybe wouldn't have made it, you know, and like you said, you ticked every box and you put the 100% and you, you had faith in yourself and that's really important and uh, we were actually talking about opportunity costs not too long ago, and you know that you you, you gave up those backups so you could have a higher chance of of making it to pro play and making it to what you wanted. Yeah, and I mean, I think for me, another thing was like um, the, these guys, the other cricketers I was playing with, would they're the guys that say, you know, oh, I might want to explore other avenues. Um, but then at the same time, they're the ones getting drunk on the weekends or, you know, they're in bed at 6 a.m. I'm training at 6 a.m. I don't drink. Um, you know, when I, get, when I get a good performance, I'll go straight to the nets and carry on working. So, like I said, for me, it's all good saying like, oh, yeah, I want to invest 100% and not have a backup plan. But talk is quite cheap, as you probably know. So, for me, the most important thing was just, I'm a big believer in you reap what you sow. And if you keep grinding every day and you do all these factors, like I said, you, you're bound to get something out of it. That's how I looked at it anyway. Um, that's, that's, yeah, that's that's huge. That's, that's so huge. And like, you're getting me excited talking about this right now, honestly. Like, um, and, and he backs up exactly what he says all the time as well. We, we, were, we were recording this podcast. We wanted to do it yesterday. He couldn't make it. That's all good. But he made sure that then he came and got on with us today and, and did that podcast. So when he says something that he's going to do it, he'll back it up and do it, whatever that is. And having that mentality in whatever you do, I think just amazes me for one um because it's it's it it's easy to say but it's hard to do right but uh definitely it's just a, an amazing amazing mindset to have um but i want you to yeah. spell out a little bit more your journey from that age seven to to where you are now of progressing through the academies um and, and what does that look like because i think that's quite interesting for a lot of listeners as well when you describe it to me i was like wow that's a that's a really cool system of how they do it um and and how you have to progress so so what does it look like well, um, to be honest, from around 8, 9, 10, I was playing for Bedfordshire under 11s, which is a minor county. And 
the goal of a minor county for a cricketer that's trying to be pro is they need to try and get into a major county or the setup of a major county because a major county is professional, such as North Ants. So you want to get into that setup. So I got into that setup and it's called the EPP and I got into that when I was about 14. And you've got a group of players, all from different minor counties, um, who are good players. And the best out of that group basically need to perform. And then you get rewarded, hopefully, with an academy contract. And an academy contract is literally the best out of the EPP and the best young cricketers in the country. And then from that, um, you have second team cricket. Um, and again, this is about performance and um, getting runs or getting wickets. And then hopefully you get a first class contract. And it sounds quite simple when you put it like that. And it kind of is, but what people don't see is they, they don't see setbacks, setbacks along the way, um, tough times and all of that. I mean, I've had setbacks already, um, which I think has been a great thing for me. Um, I mean, a couple of examples would be 15. Um, there's a thing called Bunbury Festival, which is the best 100-odd kids in the country. And I didn't get into that. And at the time, a young kid with a big ego and high aspirations was kind of a kick in the teeth. Um, because I wanted to be a pro, but you know, um, there's all these kids at my own age, let alone older than me, who are better than me. So that was one setback. Um, and then 17, I missed the whole season from a stress fracture as well, from a back, which was probably a bigger setback, to be honest. Yeah, I, I got injured in Dubai. Um, I missed the whole season. And it's not, 17 is not that young either. So that was a, a big blow. Um, but I just want to quickly touch on the 15, not getting to Bunbury. Um, for me, that was a big wake up call because it was, for me, it was a sign telling me I needed to work harder because I mean, I, looking back, maybe I should have got in, maybe I didn't, but the coaches clearly didn't think I was good enough. Um, so from, I remember the day I found out that news, that was really like a wake up call for me. Like you need to do more. And that's when I started going to the nets in the morning before school and all of this. And every year, I believe the progress just went like that. Um, so yeah, setbacks, they, for me, they will all come with, with, with everyone. But it's a cliche, but how you deal with them. Um, easier said than done, I know. But I, I know some people that would just, you know, give up or just kind of curl into a ball. But having that perseverance is one of the biggest things as well is work ethic and belief. Those qualities we talk about is kind of what you need. Um, so, yeah, setbacks are quite important, I think. And what's cool is the, the way you're approaching this again, it sounds like when you were younger, you didn't have that humility and that humility was actually what, what kept you, that lack of humility kept you from uh, getting better. And so as you learn to be humble and, you know, as you got that setback and it kind of knocked your ego a little bit and you realize you had to work harder or that, it, you know, there was things that were going to get in the way and you had to adapt to it. It, it created that, that humbleness that you have. And I, I think that's why you're so much more successful now than you were four years ago. Yeah. Yeah, um, definitely. I think, um, but like I said, I mean, that is bound to happen. I mean, at some point with some people, they're going to get a knock or a setback. Um, but yeah, I think having, having those, some people literally at a young age, it kind of just goes like that. But having those setbacks at a young age for me helped. But some people get those a bit later on in their career, which sometimes is a bit of a pain, obviously, because that's when you want to be everything going smoothly when you're 20 plus. But getting it out of the way early for me was quite a big thing. Absolutely. Well, I think anyway. And there's not to say that it won't come up again, but now you know a, a great way to approach it, right? Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Course. And so let's let's bring things more into the present now. So you signed your professional contract with Northamptonshire uh, a year ago, am I right? Yeah, just, just over a year ago, yeah. About, yeah, about 14, 15 months ago, yeah. And, and so, and obviously COVID and stuff has messed everything all around, but, but how has that journey been for you now, like signing that first pro professional contract? Obviously, that's a huge step and like you've made it in that sense of where you wanted to go since you were a kid um how do you then reorientate get that motivation again and to be like right let's go let's continue to to grow and 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 learn um for me first of all with that contract a lot of it's been quite a common thing i've heard from coaches and past players and advice people have given me when someone gets a contract they kind of feel like oh i've made it 
not that I can stop working hard, but they kind of get complacent. But for me, like to answer your question, it's not really been challenge, challenging to get that motivation because um, my mentality has always been when something happens, when you do well or whatever, my instant reaction should be, right, done, next, move on. Um, and when I got that contract, it, yeah, it was good. I mean, but I'm doing the same thing as I was two years ago. I'm training every day. I'm working hard. Um, so, yeah, like the contract is good, but it's just like another little milestone. But it's next, move on, next goal. Um, and the next goal now is to score runs in first team cricket, which is first class cricket. And that will hopefully open the gate for England. So it's just the case of just that relentless mentality of just, you know, when you have a good performance, some people go and celebrate that performance, but others may go back to work. And I feel like the latter is the better mentality anyway. Yeah, I love it. I love that you're so focused on like the, the journey and on the present and, and that's something I was gonna ask you in that in that high performance situation, you know, when you're playing when you're in games. Um yeah. like I it just it just fascinates me, right? I love sport. I love just getting into your mind of, of what's going through it. Are you focused on anything else apart from what's in front of you in terms of like just it, you're totally in the present? Because you strike me as someone that in life just focus on the present. It's like what I'm working on now and what's the weeks giving me now rather than like too far in the future or living in the past or whatever. You're just really in that present and, and, and in a nice sweet spot. So would you say that's where you are when you're when you're on the pitch and you're performing as well? Yeah, I mean, when I'm in the zone, whether it's training or in a game, it's only cricket. Like, there's, I'm a true believer in never getting, bringing emotional stuff inside that zone. Past problems, it could be breaking up with your girlfriend or your parents are arguing or you've had a fallout with a mate. That's irrelevant. Like, you don't bring that in. Regardless of how bad it is outside, right, you don't let that affect you negatively when you're in the zone, when you're training or playing a game. Um, I think the biggest thing I've learned is learning, it's going to sound weird, but learning not to think. Because what you're doing in the training is you're training your instincts. You're training your muscle memory. And when you're playing a game, for example, and you're facing a ball or bowler, as soon as you start thinking, that for me is weakness. I'm basically, it's going to sound weird, but when I'm facing a bowler, I'm just letting my instincts take over because I train them instincts. But when I start overthinking it, going like right, premeditating, what should I do here? What should I do here? Or I'm thinking about things outside of cricket. My focus drifts and I'm, I'm not really in the right place. Whereas I've, I think the best way to do it is literally just staying present, like you said, watching the ball or in football, you know, focusing on a certain pass or whatever and letting them instincts take over. Because effectively what training is, is just training instincts. And you know what's really cool about what you're saying there is, is the fact that um, that's a form of meditation. You know, the, the idea behind meditation and when when you meditate like uh, on a daily basis and when I do it, it's it, it for me, it's teaching my brain to be able to focus on that person and to pretty much put everything aside and just be able to clear my mind and just uh, be aware of myself. And, and then be able to to really be in control. And so that, that idea of what I do as meditation is just in the mornings, you do it all day, every day, practicing uh, on cricket. And so your meditation, you know, it's not, it might not be the meditation that someone does in their living room when they're sitting on the ground or whatever, but it, it's the same concept. You're, you're focusing on just cricket and nothing else and just that present moment. And I think that's how you can really learn to hone your skills and hone your focus into whatever activity you're doing. Yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah. Um, um, and we've, we've spoken a lot about cricket and stuff, and, and we'll, we'll continue that conversation in a little bit. But I want to get to know you more. I want to get to know, you know, what makes you tick, what, what do you do for fun, and, um, you know, our mutual connection um, back in the UK. I know you guys hang out a lot, but how do, you, how do you unwind from all of that? You know, cricket's intense, it's a lot of fun, and you get a lot of enjoyment out of it, but there's other parts of your life as well, I'm sure. So, you know, how does family play a role in your life and friends, and, and how does that play out? Um, it's more, it's, it's hard to explain because cricket is so, it, it's so, in, not cricket, but when you've got a mentality, a certain mentality, it's so intense all the time and you do need to switch off. Um, 
but you're always training, you're always focused. Even when you're resting, you're resting to go back to training, if that makes sense. Um, for me, just um, hanging out with friends, just chilling is kind of my, um, my go-to, really. I don't play much golf, a lot of people play golf. Um, I go out sometimes, you know, like um, just with mates, restaurants, anything like that, just kind of get my mind off cricket. But it's nothing, nothing too spectacular. Um, hanging out with family, um, listening to a lot of music, um, playing some PlayStation, just chilling really. But um, it's nothing like spectacular. I mean, I'm quite a chilled out person outside of cricket. Um, but yeah, like, like I said, it's kind of like um, your mind is almost kind of always working. Even when you're, you, you have a long training session, for me, I'll see mates or whatever, but I'm kind of itching to go again. Um, and just you know, looking forward to going again. Um, it's yeah, it's weird, but I the most the most enjoyable thing for me is batting. I love batting. Um, I love playing cricket. Like I will do that for fun. Um, I'd rather do that than go to a nightclub or anything like that. That is my fun time. But you're going to need some time off. You're going to need some rest or whatever. And that's when music, PlayStation comes in and just really getting your head off it. But I think getting that. That right balance is is quite crucial. Oh, I was just going to ask you: Do you do you feel like you often subconsciously think about cricket and strategize, and then you know the next day you're like, "Oh crud! I just thought about that last night," or something like that, or like, "I dreamed about it last night." Does that ever happen? Yeah, I mean, it's going to sound weird, but I mean, I know a couple of other sportsmen who are like it. Like, I've, I listen to a lot of documentaries: um, Jordan, Kobe Bryant, Mayweather, all these guys, and uh, it's going to sound weird, but I sometimes, I, I think about cricket a lot, right? And I'll just be in the shower and I'll be like practicing my like, batting like, in the shower. I'll be going to bed be thinking about, I'll be thinking about like my batting when I'm going to bed or like just things like that. It's, it's kind of obsessive, I know. But like, I just like, it's just that, like, it is an obsession. I truly believe it's an obsession. Like, it's just a constant want to get better. Um, so yeah, to answer your question, I do have that. Like, I'll dream about cricket. Some like sometimes, a lot of the time, I'll dream about cricket because I'm always thinking about it. Um, it's a bit sad, I know, but it's just like it's just what I want to do. Uh, and you were just talking about yeah, Mayweather and and Kobe Bryant and stuff like that. So who who are some of your um, real mentors or um, kind of inspirations in in sport in general? Um, three, three people I would say I'd say Floyd Mayweather and Kirby Bryant two of them and recently from watching The Last Dance I'd probably put Michael Jordan in there as well um, I've probably seen a great show um, and it literally comes down to their mentality their work ethic their discipline uh, Mayweather has always been at top for me you know he doesn't drink um, he's always working out he's always in shape um, those qualities I look to try and bring in to my life. Um, I and mean, I'm not saying I'm like him, but I try and copy the things they do because there's a reason why they're so successful. Um, you know, let's not get it twisted. It's not this, I don't believe in luck. There's a reason why they're so successful. And I try and use those things and try and adapt my lifestyle to a lifestyle that's similar to theirs, if that makes sense. Because for me, that, that's what's made them successful. So yeah, athletes like that, I've always looked up to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's it's a huge part of your your kind of process is that mentorship and and adopting those good habits, right? It's, that's a huge part, and I'm sure a big part of your training um, for yourself is just just in continuing to develop yeah. that mentality. And uh, I got to yeah, ask you, yeah. I got to ask you the question: What's your what's your UK soccer uh, football team? Who who do you support? I was wish you would answer that. Um, I am. A, I'm an Arsenal fan, which is, um, yeah, not great this year, is it? I mean, <laughs> yeah, I've, I haven't, um, I'm normally quite a, a strong fan, but this year I've, I've been a bit of a weaker one, should we say. I haven't watched as much football this year um, for obvious reasons. I mean, it's been an absolute, it's been nothing short of an atrocity, to be honest with you. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I haven't watched much football this year. Um, they they need you to come in and deliver a talk on mentality and, and how to continue to get better. That's what they need to do. 
I think they, yeah, they need a few things. I think, but that's one of them. Um, but yeah, um, I'm an Arsenal fan, and um, hopefully next year we do better. But this year has been it's been shocking. So you know, it's embarrassing. It is is that's who I support. But you got to stay with them through thick and thin, as they say. So you got it, you got it. But um, yeah, let's let's jump back on to <laughs> let's jump back on to uh, kind of the main body of things, and let's move more into the future now of, of where you want to go. Obviously, you've you've alluded to the idea of England, and that's a big target for you. But where do you where do you want to take cricket um, over these next kind of ten ten years? You know, do you what, what's your goal? Um, my goal. <laughs> My goal really um, is to effectively take over the, the sport. I mean, it sounds quite like, wow, but I mean, like bold and cocky. But yeah, it's to go down as a great, go down as one of one of the best. That's non non negotiable for me. That's always been a goal, and it's to really change the sport and just take over the sport, especially English cricket, and just kind of be that face. I mean, you talk about. Boxing, you think of Canelo now, you talk about football, you think of Ronaldo, Messi, or you talk about basketball, and right now you think of LeBron James or Kevin Durant or Steph Curry or whoever. But for me, like I want to be the first name that's associated with cricket right like in the present time. So that's my goal is to like play for England and kind of be the face of world cricket, really. Um, I mean, it's going to be tough. I mean, I think everyone knows that, but somebody has to, don't they? So yeah to have to have the audacity to say that's where i want to go and then like just work towards that that's like that's hugely powerful yeah yeah i mean um that's why i think i mean you look at com competition you let's say you want to be the best in the world for example because that's my goal you've got people in in england who are your age but you're not competing with your age, you're competing with anyone between 20, or well, right now, 15, maybe even like 10, 10 and 30, because when you're in 10 years' time, they'll be 20, won't they? So you're competing with a 15-year span, really. And it's not just in England, it's across the world. You can think about how many people are playing cricket across the world, in India, in Australia, in South Africa. So that is where I think the work ethic really, when you look at it like that, I think you can never sit back and say, actually, I'm complacent here, I'm doing enough. Because, I mean, there could be someone in India who's 20 years old and he's doing twice as much as you. How would you know? So, yeah, I think that's how you could look at it anyway. Absolutely. And another question I have for you is, is so how has your, your family played a role uh, in this? You know, is your parents when you were younger, um, obviously must have been a huge support for you on your goal of, of want to wanting to get to where you are now um but yeah how how have the, your parents been both an inspiration and a support to you on this journey yeah they've been huge i mean to answer your question first i mean i'd say for me i think everyone should have a why so a why basically quickly is why do you get up early in the morning why do you do what you do why do you do this why do you do that a reason behind what you're doing it needs to be greater than just the purpose of I want to be the best, in my opinion. And when adversity comes, when it, it will come for everyone, when adversity comes, um, when times get tough, I think that why is the true driving factor. I've heard athletes talk about it. And for me, one of the, my whys is my parents. That really motivates me to be the best. I mean, my mum she sacrificed a lot of money a lot of time to help me get to where i've got to driving you know sacrifice certain jobs um she could have taken my dad sacrificed job promotions um a lot of time i mean training with me every day without fail 5 a.m 2 a.m 12 p.m whatever time he's there uh going out with his mates he never goes out with his mates he's always with me training so for me when i see that i mean i could say to him 3 a.m. tomorrow, let's go me and you to the Nets. He wouldn't even hesitate. So when I see that, how can I quit or how can I not give 100% when my parents, I can see what they're doing for me. I can see the commitment, the sacrifice they're making. I, for me, quitting is not even an option or when it gets tough, I can never just curl up because of what my parents have been through to help me. So for me, that's a why for me. And I think that really helps when adversity comes. 
And I'm sure everyone has different reasons, but as long as you're always kind of as a driving factor, I think that, that can help a lot. Hugely. I think that's amazing yeah. just to have some parents that are so like all in on on whatever you're doing you know yeah, i'm sure they i'm sure they would have been the same yeah. even if it wasn't cricket if it was something else um they would have been yeah. all in on yeah, on was. you and that's all that's amazing you know yeah they would um like i said i've never i've never gone to my dad or whatever and said can we go to the nets and he said no or you know we go into i say we're finished like that it is you do need a team behind you, don't get it wrong. You need support behind you. No one ever does it by themselves. I mean, like Lewis Hamilton, for example, his dad had like four jobs at one time or something like that. But there's always something behind these people's success. Um, they don't have to see it. I mean, but as long as you acknowledge it, that's all that matters, I suppose. But it is a crucial part um, because I'm not sure really where I'd be without their, their support. Absolutely. That's huge. That's really yeah. huge. Well, I think you know yeah. we've got through a huge amount of content in this in this podcast. It's been it's been amazing. Um, Aaron, I was just going to ask you: Do you have yeah. any kind of more further questions for for Milo before I wrap things up? Yeah, I mean the the one thing I'm curious about is you know you talk about uh, giving that uh, giving your full effort because your parents uh, gave that full effort, but. Why, why do you feel the, the desire to give back to them? Because I feel like that's often, you know, something that not everyone has or doesn't see. And so why, what made you see what they were giving to you and what made you want to give back that full effort because they were doing it for you? Well, to answer your first question, I see what they do because I've seen other parents with, with their kids and it's not a dig at them, but I've seen other parents when I go to the Nets or I've heard other kids say, I wish I was, I could do this, but my dad won't do it, or he's at the pub, or, you know, he's drunk, or whatever. I've seen other parents, you know, act a certain way, and with my parents, I've never had that issue with, I felt like they, they could do more. I've never had that issue. So I think I've, I've seen other people struggle with their parents and get that same level of commitment. And secondly, I think it's just that it gives me satisfaction seeing that their work has paid off and I kind of can give back. I mean, when I told them I got contracts, I mean, they like, they both cried, which is, they don't cry often. So that was nice to see. I mean, it almost made me cry. And the thought of just, you know, telling them that, I mean, this Saturday, the season starts and um, it's at Edge Baston, which is one of the biggest grounds in the country. So for me, that would be, you know, a good experience to play there. Um, and they will come and watch. I think you allow people in. And the thought of performing whilst they're there, um, it already just gets me motivated to perform because I know how much it means to them as much as me. My success is also their success. That they, they kind of, they kind of celebrate my success more than I do. So it it just motivates me to work that little bit harder. I think. That's awesome. That's awesome. And do you do you think that your parents ever doubted your success, or or do you think they were always there for you a hundred percent and just kind of fully supported your dream? Um, no, I don't think they've ever. I don't think they've ever doubted me. Um, I don't think they ever have. Um, they're definitely fully invested. I mean, that's for sure. Um, I think my mum was slightly a bit more. You know keen for me to maybe do a bit more like on the, on the university side just to have something there um which i mean is fair enough but i think they both knew from from a certain age i mean to answer your question a bit more clearly my dad always says um because he gets asked why do you you know do so much you know do you not want to rest because they see what he does with me and he says to people if he felt like i was saying i want to be the best in the world or whatever but I was sat at home in bed or on the PlayStation or going out getting drunk, he'd probably just switch off. But when I didn't get into Bunbury when I was 15, I cried when I found out the information my mum told me. I remember it very clearly. And literally about half an hour after I found out, I said to my dad, let's go, let's get back to work. Those exact words. And I said, I will show everyone that they made the wrong decision. And my dad sometimes pulls me up on that and he says, that when he heard that, that was when he realised I was serious about making my dream come true. And he said that 
when he when he heard that, that was him. Like, yeah, I think he he's got it. Um, but maybe before that, because you're young, a lot of young people say things like when you're 10, anyone could say, I want to be the next Wayne Rooney or whatever. Like, it's quite easy to say. But I think that was when he really realised, and my mum, that I was quite serious about turning pro. So from that that time period onwards, I think they've always had that, like, um, support in me anyway. They've been fully invested, I think. That's awesome. And I actually want to correlate that a little bit to just uh, even going beyond the parent-child relationship. But, you know, they were an investor in your life. And I think that's really important that that your parents were your investors in your life. But uh, beyond that, it, it, it for everyone out there, you know, that that is looking to pursue their dreams, it's important to find that mentor or that that group of people or that that individual that will support you no matter what, and that they have your back and believe in your dream. And that can go, you know, when you're making a startup or something or uh, creating your own venture, that you have uh, angel investors that invest in you, even if you're gonna uh, do good. Or not or you know you have so a mentor who will invest all their time in you when you ask them to without asking for any kind of payment back and you know just having someone there that's fully committed is really vital to to your own success and it really it really makes it a lot more exponential and quicker for you to succeed when you have that pe- those kind of people for sure and and I mean I mean I think it's a great way to summarize as well what we do here you know Having just spoken to you and stuff like we're we're fully invested in your dream, you know. We wanna we wanna hear about your progress as you as you progress as a pro and um, through your career, and like we're we're invested in in bringing that to to the eyes and ears of people, um, which is you know what we do here at the Gen Z, and it's just a huge part I think of anybody's success. Like you said, is bringing people with you on that journey. Um, so so yeah, just as we as we begin to to wrap things up here, you know, we're we're excited to be on this journey with you and have this first kind of introduction interview with you and and then to check back in with you in a year and and see how that first season went. Um, we're we're super excited to do that. But again, thanks so much for coming on and sharing your story. I think this this for me has been an absolutely huge podcast um, for 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 our audience of young individuals. Um, just to hear someone speak with so much passion, so much kind of zeal about what they're doing um, is just exciting and, and gets me motivated um, to do the things that I'm, I'm focused on as well. So I hope that has the same effect on, on other, other individuals listening and watching now. Um, but I, the, the final question I want to finish on is, is just I would like you to finish with a final message for the audience um, of, of what you want to leave them with. Um, my final message would probably be um, to just simply, I mean, I'm not talking as a, someone that's made it completely yet. Obviously, I'm only starting my career. Um, but I strongly believe that whatever you want to achieve, you can achieve that thing. Given the fact, given the right amount of work ethic, the right amount of belief and dedication, I truly believe that someone can the mind can achieve what the mind can believe is what they say um and i truly believe that there are a lot of people out there who want to do certain things and they just they just don't go for it but i just think you should just go for it simple as that no regrets just go for it see what happens give it 100 percent, like i said um and work work flipping hard um and know what you want it's, it's quite it's quite a simple equation but yeah work, work hard I mean, the way I see it, you, you dedicated every single minute of your life to, to pursue your passion, man, and that's not something everyone does, and you, you were thinking on, uh, on cricket, you know, on and off, you know, whether you're playing or not, you're always thinking about cricket, and that's something that, I, that I've actually heard across many, you know, TED Talk speeches and many, many YouTubers like Alex Becker, uh, who all say the same thing, that you have to focus yourself and hone yourself and think about what you're doing and the passion you're pursuing whether you're you're on the job not on the job whether you're playing the sport not playing the sport it should always be on your mind and that's what you do so i love it yeah i think i think also to quickly just say that i think that a lot of people are afraid to have massive ambitions so like people people would say oh you know i want to be a professional cricketer or whatever or i'd love to play for england one day but why not I want, I'm, I'll, I want to be the best in the world by 28. I want to be um, 
you know, the greatest to ever play the game. Why not? Like, I have these huge ambitions. Like, it, the amount of times I've said something, people have laughed at me. I, I'd be a millionaire if I had a pound every time. Like, but why not? Gen- genuinely, why, why not? Like, somebody has to be the best in the world or somebody has to be prime minister or some, like, why can't it be you? Just go for it. Um, because what you'll find is as you get older, a lot of people will filter out anyway. They'll lose interest. So just go for it. Um, as I'm sure you two would probably back as well, just having these huge, huge dreams and just working at it is one of the most powerful things, I think, anyway. It's huge. It's huge. And, and uh, a huge inspiration and quote from mine is, is from Usain Bolt. And he says, someone asked him about how he performs under pressure at these huge events in like the 100 meter sprints and stuff. And he says, you know, I, I love going and doing these huge events in, in front of huge crowds because that's my moment to perform and have fun all the hard work yeah. has been done i don't i don't yeah. care about any of that and and that's that's just a, a, a something for life i think and something you embody is that that hard work off the pitch uh, so that when you're on you're just having fun and, and in the moment and like aaron said earlier you're meditating essentially when you're on that pitch yeah. so no i think that's yeah. awesome Exactly. But thanks so much for coming on. We really appreciate all your time. Um, this this uh, episode will be posted um, on YouTube and you'll also find it on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Um, so that'll be excellent for everybody to hear and listen to it there. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we'll, we'll finish as we always do. Cheers, Cheers for now. For now.